Hello and welcome to episode six of the Electric MX-5 build. Yes, six. We're moving on slowly but surely and we are getting there. So on this episode, I spend a day at Cage Laser and we get the front battery box built and TIG welded together. Josh gets the cradle built for the MX-5, which is gonna hold the battery box, the motor and gearbox in place. He fits the type two charge connector to make it look like a proper electric car. And I said the word proper, which shows my Bristolian accent. And I'm gonna do a tech talk on gear ratios, the math slash maths behind it, uh, how you work out what your top speed of your vehicle is gonna be, so how you select your diff, your gearbox, and your maximum motor RPM to suit your build. Plus, we're gonna have a quick look at the gearbox and what goes inside it, of what we're fitting to this car. So, as normal, hit a subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and let's go. So as you've already seen, Josh has TIG welded together all the little bracketry to go under the vehicle. We've had a delivery from Cage Laser of the two main tubes that run down the vehicle. Um, he's bolted them all in place, got the G-clamps on and the zip ties. He's now going to MIG weld to tack them all together, take it off, chuck it on the bench and TIG it all. So go for it, Josh. Nice short. Safety first, eh? Josh has finished welding all this frame in and it even fits back in the car. He didn't warp it too much. Now we're gonna move on to do our type two charge port. Okay, so here we have our type two charge port. We're gonna be fitting to the fuel filler uh, location on this. We've only had to do a small amount of modification to the actual body itself on the inside and the outside. Um, we've just had to open the hole out a little bit to accept the, uh, the diameter of this, which is a bit larger than the original filler hole. Um, we've, what we've actually done is we've 3D printed a nut retention plate just because getting access to the, the nuts on the back are actually quite difficult. Um, and then what we've also done is 3D printed a little cover fascia panel um, just so it neatens it up and it, it actually seals the um, charge port into the boot as well. Um, so what we're going to do is now go ahead and fit this to the car. Looks like Josh has done a pretty good job. Let's just check, shall we? Fits pretty good. It looks like a proper electric car now. Now I can go and park an electric vehicle charging spaces and make people think they've been iced. And yes, that is a thing. People with internal combustion engines 
and big four by fours do block and park electric vehicle charging spaces just for the fun of it, which at times is actually quite funny. But I have seen some videos which haven't gone too well for those sort of people. Before I get carried away, let's head to Cage Laser and get the battery boxes built, shall we? As you can see behind me, I finally arrived at Cage Laser Engineering. So let's go inside, check out some of their machinery and toys and get these battery boxes made, shall we? Now I'm back from Cage Laser Engineering with the battery box. We've ground it down a bit just to clean it all up before powder coat. Josh is going to add the brackets to the bottom of it so it's mounted onto the battery motor cradle. Then we can send it off for powder coat and hopefully start building it on the next episode. I'm going to do a tech talk on the gearbox we're going to be using in the MX-5, the ratios and how we've done the math slash maths, depending on what your country you're in, to get to that ratio and calculate rough the top speed of the vehicle. So. Let's go. Welcome to our tech time part of this episode. I'm gonna talk through gear reduction and our top speed and how we get to that point. So here we have a rather crude drawing by me, um, but hopefully this covers all the math that goes into working out what the top end speed is gonna be of the vehicle and then allows you to decide your diff ratio and your gearbox ratio and your, maybe your motor. Um, so we have a Hyper 9 motor with 8,000 RPM output running through a 1.6 to one gearbox. Now that could be a 1.8 or a 2 to 1 depending on which option you choose. So that then goes in as 8,000 RPM divided by 1.6 which gives us 5,000 RPM. We then throw that 5,000 RPM down the prop shaft into the 4 to 1 rear diff which there is an option of a 3.6 to 1 rear diff in the MX-5 as well. That then comes in here at 5,000 RPM divided by 4.1 to give us 1,219.5 RPM coming out of the diff. We now need to convert that over into seconds slash meters per second, so we can then calculate our speed. So we then take that 1,219.5 RPM and divide it by 60 seconds, which gives us 20.32 RPM. 
At this point, we need to times that by the circumference of the tire. Now we do that by measuring the wheel diameter, which we've measured in meters, because it makes it a lot easier for this calculation. So it's 0.75 meters. And we times that by pi, which is that magical number that everyone's taught in school and always forgets. And yes, I did Google it, which is 3.1459, yada, yada, yada. It goes on for a long time, um, which gives us 1.79 meters. So with that times, from our RPM here, that gives us 36.37 meters per second. But if you throw that into Google and convert it across to kilometers per hour or miles per hour, you get 131 kilometers per hour or 81 miles per hour, which doesn't seem like a huge amount for an MX-5. But trust me, when you're 80 miles an hour in MX-5, it doesn't necessarily feel that stable. Now the original vehicle could do 119 tops, I think but we do have the option on the rear diff on the MX-5 to change it to the 3.6 to one. So that would increase the top speed, but it would affect our zero to 60, which our rough current zero to 60 estimates around eight-ish seconds. So maybe change the rear diff and then we'd probably be more similar to the original zero to 60 time and a lot higher on the top speed. But I prefer to have better zero to 60 than top speed at the moment. It's gonna be a little bit more fun. So let's take a closer look at our gearbox setup we have here. Now this is our 1.6 to 1 reduction gearbox. And as I've already mentioned, we do other ratios as well, which is just a simple internal change of the gear set. Now it's a planetary gear set. With the Hyper 9 system, you get an input shaft, which you heat slink, heat, shrink, heat shrink onto the end of the Hyper 9 motor to make sure it's a really snug fit along with your keyway. Um, and this then slots into the gearbox along with the motor into the planetary gear set, like so, which fits perfectly now. Now these are a fairly straightforward, simple design, and they've been produced for a lot of years. So they're very well proven and tested, and are found in loads of American vehicles, and people put big power through these in drag racers and off-road vehicles. Now we have a bullet aluminium case, with all the bearings and everything in them. We put multiple mounting points on the bottom and on the side you can pick up on, we have an oil drain and an oil top up. And so it's in bullet aluminium at the moment. It could be anodized, it could be polished. Um, with the current design we've got is this rear plate and input shaft is interchangeable. So we're also gonna be producing these for the Nissan Leaf, for the Siemens motor, and for a couple of very new special motors we have coming out later this year that I can't tell you anything about. Now, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. Now, I know this episode has been a little bit more hands-on and weldy and fabricate-y, but unfortunately, that's a massive part of the EV conversion. But we will be moving on to more EV-related stuff in further episodes. So thank you very much for watching and come back for episode number six because we're actually going to be putting the batteries in the battery box, doing the Orion wiring and all the HV wiring. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon.